1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York, tragically hip. That's Poets of Phantom Power. Good afternoon. It's Opie. It's Anthony. Hello. And just in case you're wondering, the fan is up to hour 19 of discussing the play from last night. <laughs> They've been discussing the play for 19 straight hours. <laughs> well, there's a lot of people that want to call, angry people. I, like you, I'm sure, have a Yankee hangover today. Yeah, that was a little bizarre. A little bizarre, but they have been discussing the play for 19 straight hours. Someone call the Guinness Book of World Records, please. Uh, yeah, guys? Yeah. yeah I, got a, uh, I got a comment about that. I mean, what's with that shit? <laughs> Yeah, could you believe that? <laughs> uh, he didn't even try. He just watched the guy uh, running around the base. Hey, you know, I'm pretty pissed off. <laughs> yeah, I think we all are. Our next caller. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, pretty good. What's up? Well, um, hey, did you see that guy drop that ball? <laughs> I mean, he, he didn't even pick it up. I mean, he hits the guy's back, and he just uh, watches the guy uh, score home run. Yeah, he's a blockhead. Yeah, that's really stupid, huh? I agree. Let's uh, take one more call here, okay? Hello. Yeah, what's going on today? Yeah, I got. I think I got a new perspective I want to add into this conversation having about the Yankees. Yeah, okay. Is it that guy? Uh, he's not <laughs> picking up the ball. That's ridiculous, huh? Sure is. What an idiot. Yeah. yeah I'm pretty pissed off as a Yankee fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't argue the call until the play's over is uh, what we want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. 19 hours and counting. They're discussing the play. <laughs> On the fans, so you might want to keep your radio here for a while. <laughs> Yanks lost, we go to Cleveland. That's all you need to know. Yeah. Exactly. All right? It shouldn't have gotten that far. No. Is what I'm I'm calling in. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, it's all well and fine. The guy pulled a bonehead move, but for God's sake, it shouldn't even have gotten to extra innings. There you go. Yankee should have ended that. <laughs> you know, maybe someone should get on the fan, you know, call him up and say, hey, Opie and Anthony say to stop discussing the play. <laughs> It's up to 19 hours and five minutes now. Still we're going to counting. We're going to keep track of that today on our show. Marathon, yeah, a marathon. Two one two nine five seven W N E W. That's the fax line. Phone line two one two seven five seven one zero two seven. A lot to get to today, so stay right where you are. On the way, we got some U two, and we'll come back with some Jimi Hendrix. One zero two seven W N E W. The Rock of New York. Days of the New and the Downtown. You're hanging with Opie and Anthony. And don't forget later this hour when you hear "The Boys of Summer" by Don Henley. Be the tenth caller to win a pair of tickets to an invitation-only acoustic performance by Cheryl Crow. You'll have to call 212-757-1027 when you hear Don Henley. All right. Any W, what do you got? Uh, we want to hear the Licky Licky song with your old boss. That song's great. Uh, Lick, Lick, Licky, Lick, Lick, Licky? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is our old uh, boss at the station we used to work at before we got fired. And we did this uh, goof song on the Volkswagen commercial, the Da 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 song. And he didn't like it because we were hitting a couple of gay issues that he felt was in bad taste. <laughs> so uh, he called us in the studio and we recorded his phone call telling us maybe we ought not do this anymore. And then we took his phone call and cut it up and put it to music, which, which really made him so happy. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our old boss. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, semi-sonic and closing time. Don Henley before that. That was the song you had to be listening for to win the Sheryl Crow tickets. And we do have a winner. Rick is getting the info as we speak. I think we'll have another chance for you to win uh, next hour. Should I give the song out right now, Ant? Sure. All right. got to be listening for REM Stand. If you hear that, be the 10th caller at 212-757-1027. And you will score tickets to see Sheryl Crow. All right. Who's the winner, Rick? Grab that mic. Oh, he doesn't even know. He's not prepared. Oh, look at this. Oh. Oh. oh okay. Wasting time. Laura. He's running. Laura Gladser of Hoboken. Cool. Hoboken? Hoboken. Very good. Congratulations, Laura. All right. Sophie and Anthony. What do you got over there, Ant? Well, I know what I'm going to be doing tonight. What? I'm watching a brand new Columbo. <laughs> I'm hooked on Columbo. Columbo's great, but this one's getting really bad reviews in the paper. But, excuse me, excuse me, four stars. The one I read, in the, I think it was in the Post, said one star. Daily They're News. way off. Daily News got four stars. Oh, See, okay. It just goes to show you, critics don't know anything. Right. If you're a Columbo fan, it's, it's probably great. Yeah. You know, I, I love watching him solve those mysteries, Opie. You always get the, the crook, bad guy, kill somebody, and then Columbo comes up and... Tries to get info from him, 
and they always give too much information. <laughs> it's like these criminals during Columbo should just shut the up. Hey, I mean, oh, you hear of a lawyer, yeah. first of all? Yeah. yeah, and then the other guy's like, I just can't understand how he got into the window. Yeah. Well, obviously, it, it's easy, Lieutenant. He <laughs> stepped on the chair and walked through the window. Well, that solves everything. <laughs> <laughs> then he, like, tricks him and stuff. The guys never, if they just shut their mouths, it, <laughs> Lieutenant, talk to my lawyer. Yeah. Oh, damn, I'm screwed now. <laughs> oh, that's it. I loved Columbo's car. He yeah. had like the donut tire on the on the back. He still got the same old car. Yeah, the rag top with the the donut tire on the back. He dressed like it. crap. He's getting a little uh He's getting a little old though, I must say these days. Yeah. And it's e easier to tell which eye is the fake one now. <laughs> it's like it just sticks like straight ahead and the other one's moving all over. Fun make me. <laughs> Whoa, look who's coming through the doorway. Oh, Damn way, Ladies and gentlemen, it's Dirty Columbo. Dirty Columbo. Uh, hello, ma'am. This is Lieutenant Columbo. Uh, I got a couple of questions to ask you. Uh, could could you shove your fist up my? <laughs> I'd love it if you could just stick your your fist up my. <laughs> Listen, get your husband over here. We'll pop my eye out, and he could scope me. Could you do that, please? Just go f me. I love that. Uh, Mrs. Columbo, she pulls out a big <laughs> rips my eye out and just shoves that thing right to my brain. I love it. All right, thank you. Hey, oh, oh, what, pardon me. One more thing, ma'am. One more. Bury your boot up my Could you do that? And could you just grab my and twist it like a pretzel? I'd love if you grab my Grab my shriveled old Columbo d and twist that thing like a pretzel. Okay, ma'am, I gotta get back to the precinct now. But oh, oh, before I leave, one more thing. Could you do, ma'am? One more thing. Put my in a vice. Could you just clamp down on my and squeeze them till they come out of the hole at that in my head that used to have an eye. Ah, <laughs> uh, Columbo, don't you have to go uh, arrest Martin Landau? <laughs> uh, I was in a series once uh, uh, with Martin Landau, and uh, after the show, after the shoot, as they call it, I jammed my fist so far up his. <laughs> I actually pulled out his prostate. It was, it was wonderful. We used to film at Universal Studios, and we all get together in the commissary and pound each other. <laughs> and pound each other with the zucchini. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take this. Obi and Anthony. When that happens, sometimes it leaves a chafing. I start itching and chafing under my nutsack. It's horrible. And then my hemorrhoids are hanging like melted mozzarella cheese. He's still oh. at it. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. On the way, we got some SCP and Kenny Wayne Shepherd. It's Opie and Anthony. Just in case you're keeping track at home, the fan has entered hour 20 of discussing the play from last night. They're up to hour 20. That's uh, interesting. I, I don't even think it happened 20 hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> they started discussing the play before it actually happened, I do believe. Uh, am I on the air, uh, the fan? Yeah, what do you got? Yeah, I'd like to discuss the um, uh, play. Okay. Uh, I think Tino made, a, Tino made a bad call. What do you mean? Yeah, I think the, uh, the umpire made a bad call. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, that was good. Thanks for the insight. Uh, I got, I got, I got an opinion on the thing. Yeah, do you have a different angle though? We've been discussing this play for 20 hours. What could you possibly add to this discussion today? Uh, I think it sucked. Yeah. Uh, the ball like hit the guy's back. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know it sucks for the Yankees. All right. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Let's get another call in here. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. What's up? I have an inside uh, something that hasn't been discussed yet. Uh, with the play? Yeah, I, I think so. Okay, let's hear it. Um, boy, I think Chuck screwed up. You know, he just stood there while uh, while the guy ran around the bases. Yeah, what can I say? He had a brain fart, you know. Uh, I I got another uh, opinion on this whole thing. All right. I think it sucks. <laughs> okay, very I'm good. A Yankee fan. I think we have uh, time for one more call in this segment. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I, got, I, got, I got an opinion. Okay, what is your opinion? What could you add to the discussion? Uh, pretty much sucks. I'm yeah. a big Yankee fan. I think uh, Chuck uh, screwed up. I uh, had the ball sitting right there and he didn't throw it. 
Okay, that's that's good. We've uh, yeah, we worked that angle for three hours today, <laughs> and it continues. Yes, it continues. There's a couple of people calling going. They're pretty psyched about last night's play because they hold in their hand tickets for Game Six at the stadium. So yeah, it's like a gamble. <laughs> so now they you know they want to go back to the stadium for Game Six. Obviously, that's why they did it. All right, uh, you know what? We gotta uh, say hi to everyone we met last night mm -hmm. at the Mellencamp thing at Tower Records. It was a huge success, and it was really cool to see a lot of. Uh, the listeners of NEW. A lot of people, yeah. A lot of people. Got to thank the promotional staff here at NEW. They did a flawless job. Uh, the whole event went off without a hitch. Got to hear Mellencamp live on the radio yesterday. That was neat. If we can only have them do uh, such a fine job when we broadcast live from the giant pop car. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we're past that. Thank yeah. God. But we got to thank like Roger and Christina and Ben and the rest of the gang. They really worked their asses off to make that happen yesterday. Had a lot of fun. Uh, got a fax here from Quasi. Hey, O and A. I finally seen what you guys look like in person. When I came out to Tower Records yesterday, Opie looks like he wears makeup. Oh, come on. Makeup? Makeup. And Anthony looks like he should be covered under Megan's Law. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, you guys rock. That's uh, quasi. I don't think I'm a child molester. Is that what he meant? I don't look like I, I wear makeup, do I? I don't know. Uh, well, thanks, I guess. We're like the Hall and Oats of radio. <laughs> yeah, we are pretty much. You know, we, we want to get out there a lot. Our whole goal is to get out on the streets as much as possible. And we finally, you know, got the first event under our belt yesterday. It felt good. But I think the next time we're out and about, Anthony, yeah, it's got to include beer. Yeah. Our listeners and beer. We had a few people offering mm -hmm. yesterday, but obviously we can't drink while we're broadcasting from a well, power record. We just can't let the boss see us drinking is, is the deal on that. That's so. true. But... Thanks to everyone who came out. Seriously, that was good. And I, I think we got uh, the live songs. We recorded them yesterday, so maybe we'll sneak in one of the one of the songs you did at Tower later on in the show. Okay. And if you got something to add, two one two nine five seven W N E W. How's the instant feedback today? Pumping in, hot and heavy. Hot and heavy. Yeah. All right, cool. We'll read some of that in a bit too. One zero two seven W N E W. The Rock of New York. Stone Temple Pilots. Interstate love song. It's Opie and Anthony. Our pal Stockbroker Dave has got a little fan club here, Anthony. Yeah, I see. Getting a lot of faxes for Stockbroker Dave. Let me read a, a few of these really, really fast. Uh, dear O&A, we just want you to know that we are officially new listeners. We've started listening to you guys every day ever since the first time we heard Stockbroker Dave on your show. We work for a Wall Street firm, and we all got a kick out of him, especially when he declared, the stock market blows. <laughs> and then his call about the Dow hitting 7,500, he was right on. So people up and down Wall Street are starting to keep their radios tuned to WNEW. Very cool. Great. Uh, real fast from John, it looks like. Stockbroker Dave, great call on the 7500. You made a lot of money for me. Keep up the good work. We're listening for the next call, Stockbroker Dave. You're the greatest. Look at that. Uh, dear Oppenak, I'm faxing you... Um, uh, to, God, I can't even read this. Uh, to express my appreciation for your... Inviting stockbroker Dave to appear on your program. He seems to be right on with his uh, picks and his predictions. I'm thinking of firing my broker. <laughs> Thank you, stockbroker Dave. Yeah, if you weren't listening, he pretty much uh, predicted that the market would go down to 7,500. That was, what, two weeks ago, he said, right? Yes, he did. Yeah. And uh, today, man, it was a mess earlier. It was like 270 points down. And it closed like just under... Ten points. Yeah, yeah, it made a uh, a rally at the end there. So back at like seventy seven thirty one. There you go. But mm. yesterday on our show, when we were at Tower Records, uh, Dave stopped by, and he went on the radio and said that the market's going to six thousand. <laughs> now he's saying six thousand. He has. He's been right every time so far. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> six thousand. I wish I had the the nuts to uh, actually uh, follow him. Mm -hmm. You know, some of his his little. Advice and, and you wish you had the money. <laughs> that too. You need the money to. Well, we're we're heavy into the market. Me and Ope. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got yeah. like ten, twenty bucks in there. There you go. We actually lost a lot of money today. Uh, our stock went down another two points today. I got lost three dollars and seventy five cents. Our stock went from twenty five last week to what is it today? Thirteen something. Oh, Fourteen. 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 Oh, great. Yeah. Great. We're a mess. <laughs> it's the world. Yeah. The world is screwed because uh, the company that we own stock in says nothing's wrong. They put out a little statement going, we don't have a clue as to why the stock dropped like 10 points in uh, like a week and a half. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's just the world right now. Russia is a mess. Asia is a mess. 
and uh, no one knows when it's going to clear up. They're starting to hint at a recession. Ah, I wouldn't get crazy using that oh, word. Oh, that's what they're hinting hey, at. Hey, you're the media. You could start a frenzy, Opie. Stop it. And Alan Greenspan, he better get some hoo-ha. He needs some hoo-ha. He needs some strange. Get him out there with a smile on his face saying everything is grand. I mean, don't kid yourself. Alan Greenspan is the most powerful man in the world. When he talks, people listen. He yeah. hints at things, and the market either goes up or down. So me and Anthony figure if we could get him some Vietnamese hookers and get him enough, yeah, we'll all be okay. The he world said, economy will be okay. He says the outlook for 1999 yeah. for the U.S. economy has weakened measurably. Oof. And uh, maybe he's talking about his sex life has weakened measurably, and he needs some help. <laughs> maybe that's what he's hinting at. Maybe he needs us to, to you know, to to bust in the hookers for him. <laughs> Boy, that'd be an expensive hooker. Could you imagine being his pal? Yeah, I would love to be. You like, get some inside scoopage. You would get the best inside scoop. Because everyone who plays the market has their tips. It's pretty funny. I like the, uh, what he says, too. He describes the economy as very fluid and voiced concerns about what he called this whole looming sort of somewhat scary psychology. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it never nails it. He kind of just hints and kind of, you know, yeah. <laughs> hangs around an issue. He's like, uh, like the what was that Kane on on um, Kung Fu? You know, when he went to the master, he never got a direct answer. Mm -hmm. It's one of those. Well, how do I uh, handle this problem? You will know when the time comes. It's like, hey, wise one. Yeah. Tell me now. Tell me exactly when the time is coming. Yeah. So I can prepare. You will know. Yeah. This guy's like very strange, like the, the man on the mountain. So. Yeah, he comes down, he says some stuff, and everyone and screws everything out. up. Exactly. But there you go. We'll be fine. So congrats to stockbroker Dave once again. And because of his prediction, I think he's taking us out to dinner, which is pretty cool. He isn't the guy that he bet. That's what I mean. Yeah. Because uh, stockbroker Dave went on the radio, said the market's going to 7,500. Now the stockbroker called and said, if it goes down to 7,500, I'm taking stockbroker Dave and you guys out to Din Din. That's it. A nice Din Din. We win. We do win this time around. So, all right. On the way, we got some great rock and roll. Well, I can't tease that song because that means something. Oh. I could tell you Cheryl Crow's on the way. All right. And some Van Halen. Stay there. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, Cheryl Crow, my favorite mistake. She'll be in the Imaginary Ballroom Monday with you and I, Anthony. That's going to be very cool. Mm -hmm. REM, before that, that was the song you had to be listening for to win a pair of tickets to a special acoustic performance by Cheryl Crow. That's going to be happening somewhere else, by the way. We'll give you details in a bit. Who's this hour's winner, Rick? Uh, that's Mike Verone from Verona, New Jersey. Congratulations, Mike. Next hour, you got to be listening for Joe Walsh's Life's Been Good to Me So Far. When you hear that, be the 10th caller, 212-757-1027, and you'll score some tickets to see. Cheryl Crow. All right? All right. We got to uh, start a new feature on the Opie and Anthony show right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Asshole of the Day. Okay. And uh, people have been voting. And it was very close, by the way. Mm, pretty we, easy, though. We got the runner-up A-hole of the day. Okay. It's flat out the story of the day. <laughs> Headline in the Daily News, Cabby, I'll call it quits. Three accidents on second day in job. <laughs> Nice. Let me read a little of this. A taxi driver who got into two accidents and mowed down a pedestrian during his second day on the job has made a wise decision. He's decided to find another line of work. I don't want to continue with this job if I don't have to. A shaky Mohammed Rahman said yesterday, uttering words sure to let city drivers and pedestrians rest a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> Check this out. After a night in the in jail, the Bangladesh immigrant blamed Tuesday's unprecedented string of accidents. He had two crashes and struck a pedestrian <laughs> 48 hours into his taxi driving career on an unlucky combination of confusion and stress. <laughs> now, the alleged one-man road menace began a shift driving for Team Systems of Long Island City, Queens at 6 a.m. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. According to police, at 9.30 a.m., he rammed a car parked at 6th Avenue. Raman said the car hit his cab, and he even flagged the cop and made out a report. All right. An hour later, Raman said he 
paused for a red light at 20th Street and Broadway. He said he got nervous when the light changed and cars honked while he waited for pedestrians to cross. I got, I got confused and my feet just slipped from the brake to the accelerator, Rahman said. That's when he struck 22-year-old Aiken Smith of Jersey City, who is now in Bellevue Hospital. Gee. <laughs> in serious condition. I mean, that's not funny, actually, but... <laughs> Cops said Rahman fled the scene. But the cabbie insisted he was looking for a parking place so he could check on Smith. Unfortunately, that's when he ran into another car. I got confused. <laughs> he said during an interview at his Ocean Parkway Brooklyn apartment. There was no way to stop the car on the street, and I was trying to spot a parking space when I accidentally hit the other car. Police arrived, charged Rahman with leaving the scene of the accident, and jailed him. He was sprung on $500 bail, and uh, he has decided to quit his lovely job as the taxi driver. Wow, man. But he, he was the runner-up uh, uh, for the A-hole of the day, Anthony. Who was today's asshole of the day? Well, Opie, he's on the cover of all the papers. Come on, Chuck. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. Spin Doctors, Tom Petty in there, and Sean Mullins live from the Imaginary Ballroom. He was in here a couple days ago with Carol Miller. Sounded great. That's a lullaby that you heard a little while ago. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, coming Monday, we got Cheryl Crow in the Imaginary Ballroom. And then Willie Nelson also next week stopping by for a little visit. It's going to be interesting. I think that's going to be very cool. So if you want to fax um, your questions to Cheryl Crow, you could do that today. We'll start collecting them because we like to get the listeners involved in our show. The fax line here is 212-957-WNEW. Also, make sure you're listening a little later this hour for Joe Walsh's Life's Been Good. When you hear that, be the 10th caller at 212-757-1027, and you'll win tickets to a special acoustic performance by Cheryl Crow with details on the way about that, all right? Good. And some feedback doing all right, Anthony? Yeah, well, G. Gronert from Elmont. Yeah. My name is G. Groner, and I think you guys are the worst thing to hit the radio since the last time my great-great-grandmother got laid. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that hurts. So I see he's trying to be funny. And hurt our feelings. And hurt our feelings. Okay. Well, you failed miserably on both parts. Thank you very much. Rick is saying there's a wrong number. Oh, we love wrong numbers. Hi, Eddie W. Yes, yeah, Rent Brown there, please. Who is this? Yeah, my name is Terry. What is the name of this company? Well, I want to know why you're calling me, Terry. I don't know. I'm, uh, this is a number I had for Mr. Red Brown, who's in video. Yeah, let me uh, check. What's the name of the company, sir? Panasonic. Panasonic, yes. Who are you trying to get a hold, a hold up, sir? I'm trying to get a hold of Red, Red Brown. Oh, okay. He's in video production. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Video. Yeah, is Red there, please? Oh, Red? Yeah. Yeah, um, geez, he just, just stepped out. Hold on two seconds. Thank you. Uh, yeah, cafeteria. Yeah, Red? Uh, no, Red is um, down the hall. All right. Who's this? This is Terry from Panasonic calling. Okay, hold on, Terry. Personnel? Uh, I'm trying to reach Red Brown, please. Red Brown? Yes, sir. Okay, this is personnel. Okay, um, I guess I've been transferred all over the place. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Actually, he's probably in uh, video production. Yeah, that's it. Okay, hold on, please. Thank you. Master Control. I'm looking for Red Brown still. Uh, yes. Red's a little busy right now. Okay. Just say if I can leave a message, please. Okay. What's the message? Uh, the message is return my call, please. This is Terry at Panasonic. Hold on. Let me tell him. He's under the desk. Red, Terry's on the phone. Curly uh, from Panasonic? Yeah. <laughs> tell him I can't talk right now. My mouth is full. <laughs> okay. He's a little busy right now. I heard all that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, let me transfer transfer you back to his office. Thank you. Red's office. Uh, yes, I'd like to leave a message for Red, please. Oh, okay. Uh, you might want his voicemail then, right? That's fine. Okay, hold on. I uh, you read Red's voicemail. Please leave a message after the tone. Hello, this is Terry Sh at Panasonic 201. Hi, uh, this is Red's voicemail. Please leave a message after the tone. Uh, yeah, hey, Red, this is Terry at Panasonic 201-392. I'm sorry. We are not receiving your message. Please speak in a clear voice. Hi, this is Red Voicemail. Please leave a message after the tone. Terry from Panasonic calling 201-392-314. Hi, this is Red Voicemail. Please leave a message after the tone. 
I'm not in the office right now, but you're listening to Opie and Anthony on 1027 WNEW. And I haven't gotten a stiff one since 1972. He's still at it. Mrs. Colombo is so frustrated. I try to work it, and it just looks like an old cocktail, Frank. You know, ones that have been in a chafing dish for like, I don't know, all night long, small and wrinkled. Now, Mrs. Colombo can't take it anymore. Pleasure her with my eyes. <laughs> You're checking out Opie and Anthony on 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, Joe Walsh. That's the song you had to be listening for this hour to win the Cheryl Crow tickets. Jeff Kirshner of Middle Village was paying attention. Ah. And now he's got a pair of tickets to see a special acoustic performance by Cheryl Crow. And don't forget, Cheryl Crow will be on our show Monday in the Imaginary Ballroom playing live. That's going to be really, really cool. We're excited about that. Yeah. And if you want us to ask a uh, question to Cheryl Crow for you, you could send those questions in now at 212-957-WNEW as we try to, you know, get the listeners more involved with our show. We, as always. We like audience participation here. Yeah. Oh, Anthony? Mm-hmm. It's official. I just saw the play for the hundredth time today. Oh, well, gee, what play are you talking about? Well, it would be the play from last night. Oh, that one. Still suffering from a Yankee hangover today. Get over it, people. Come on. Go, well, um, people... Go to Cleveland and get it over with. Well, people want to know what hour the fan is up to. The fan is in hour 20 discussing the play. With callers. For the last 20 hours, the fan has been discussing the play. Is there any new spin that any caller could put on this? Because, you know, we drive in and, and uh, plink around, hear what some of the other stations are doing. And the fan was just harping on the play over and over again. It sounded a little like this, actually. I mean, I could understand once or twice, but the whole show now, are we in hour 20 of, of this? Hour 20. Hello! Uh, yeah, it's Mr. Fan. Yeah, what's up? Uh, I just want to uh, comment on uh, the play last night with mm -hmm. uh, Chuck uh, Noblet. Yeah, we're looking for a new spin on this. What do you got? Well, um, I think I, I'm going to touch on something that hasn't been touched on uh, before. Okay. Uh, uh, the ball uh, hitting the runner's back. Yeah. I think uh, Chuck should have picked it up and probably thrown it. <laughs> well, you, you make well, a, you make a very good, valid point there, sir. Hey, thank you. I love the show. Thank you. Let's go to the next caller here. Hello. Hey guys. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. How you doing? It's Bobby from Brooklyn. Hey Bobby. What do you got? I love you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I just want to uh, comment on this uh, this play last night. Yeah. What a knucklehead, huh? What do you got uh, about uh, it? Uh, Chuck Novick. Yeah. Um. Boy, he should have thrown that ball, huh? <laughs> you know, I mean, I've seen the play maybe uh, 600 times now. Yeah. And each time I'm going, you know, hey, Chuck, throw the ball, huh? <laughs> What's the matter with you? You still not? Well, I can't argue with you. I think he had a little brain fart there. Hey, thanks, man. All right. Hey, Bubba Booey. <laughs> 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 That's good. That's good, man. That's how the whole day goes over there, man. Yeah, they're an hour Sorry. 20, so. Uh, a couple of our listeners are trying to get through to, to you know, say that Opie and Anthony say stop discussing the play. Stop the madness. Yes, on the way, we got some Green Day and the Who. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, Green Day, Time of Your Life, Good Riddance from the Nimrod CD, our pals. I would love to get those guys in the imaginary ballroom. Yeah. And I know they'd come on our show in a second. We just got to track them down. Uh, butt plug. <laughs> they love that. Yeah, they, they they enjoyed our Demented World CD. If there's anyone more immature than us, I think it's Green Day. Pretty much. Yeah. And they uh, took one of our bits and they uh, they pretty much did it on MTV for us, which was and great. After the music awards there. Anytime you see them interviewed, they're doing it. Yeah, they're doing work plug, which is from our CD that you can't find in Manhattan. That's uh, good Thank stuff. you. Thank, Thank you, you Rescon Records. Appreciate that. Yeah. We were at Tower Records yesterday. and uh, not yeah, one, couldn't not, even find a copy. Not one copy. Well, that's okay. We're only, you know, in New York. So but why stock uh, the stores in New York? It wasn't like there was a thousand listeners there that could have possibly bought the Meta World. No, 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 this is real good. We don't want to saturate the New York market. Yeah, of course not. Yeah, you know, 
only about 300 people went upstairs in the comedy section and they, they didn't see it. But no, that's cool. That's, that's okay. No, I, you why, must have a real good strategy. This is this is good. I'll, we'll wait and see. Why argue? I think we sold 10, 12 uh, last week alone. Uh, 14. So. 14. Oh, great. Yeah, 14. Yeah. Domino World. Above Cities. expectations. Yeah. Thank you. No, really appreciate it. That's good stuff. <laughs> All right. Got a fax here from uh, Ken. Get those sepitamoric morons off what? the air. They're not funny. Just play music. What? Get those, oh, sopitophoric morons. Sophomoric? Sophomor Is it supposed to be sophomoric? Um, get those sepitamoric. Sophomoric. Oh, sophomoric. <laughs> that doesn't say sophomoric. At least you can't spell sophomoric, right? You can't spell sophomoric S E P I H T O M A P R I C. What? What? Well, okay. We're sophomoric. Well, We're... well, na 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 to you. Hey, Oppenak, I came to Tower Records to meet you last night. Seeing John Mellencamp was a plus, but the opportunity to watch you guys work was very interesting. Anthony, I think you're so talented. Your impressions couldn't be more perfect. Whoa. After listening to your voice, I could only imagine what you might look like. You look just like Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce, huh? That, that's a we go. huge compliment. Opie, I'm sure you've been told this before. Um, you look like David Spade. Oh. <laughs> that's the one like bad part about finally getting out and meeting people. Right. Because now you've got to leaf through all the faxes and emails about what you look like. Ugh. Our buddy Ryan from Union, New Jersey, yeah, yeah. came by too. Yeah, had his mom bring him. Yeah, that was cool very kid. Cool. Yeah, and he says, uh, Anthony, I don't know why in the world a guy thought you looked like a child. Yeah, somebody said that I, I looked like a child molester. Yeah, that you should be part of Megan's law. Yeah, <laughs> he says I don't know why uh, he said you look like a child molester. A drug smuggler, maybe. That's <laughs> not a child molester. And uh, Opie, I can't believe you actually say bro that much in regular conversation. <laughs> I'm a separate dude when I'm out in public. <laughs> Our boss is working on my language. He doesn't want me to say do too much or bro or things suck. All right, chief. <laughs> what do we got, champ? Yeah, I love that stuff. How you doing, pal? <laughs> I'm not your pal, buddy. Don't call me chief, champ. <laughs> All right, friend. <laughs> That's the best when you're supposed to know someone's name and you just got to quickly come up with, hey, uh, hey. dude, what's up? Chief. <laughs> hey, pal. Hey, buddy. <laughs> bro, what's going on, man? I love that. Me and Jen have to, uh, as a married couple, you have to devise little ways of introducing people you don't know uh, their their name. Mm -hmm. Like, in the, we'll be walking in the supermarket or something. Anthony, hey, how you doing? What's this guy's name? <laughs> hey, what's up? And then we're talking, and I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. And Jen knows if enough time goes by to uh, use me as the fall guy and just go... I'm sorry, my name's Jennifer, my husband's so rude. I'm just like, oh, yeah. oh, what a stupid me. And then the second he goes, oh, my name's Bob. Bob! Oh, Jen, this is Bob! Like an idiot. That's the only way it works, though. Yeah, that's the truth. It's embarrassing. Actually. I got a brain like a sieve when it comes to names. Well, we had a special treat when we were at uh, Tower Records yesterday. We had John Mellencamp, which was huge. Yeah. And then out of nowhere... Andrew Dice Clay shows up, assuming that the huge crowd all the way around the block was for him. I think he's just searching out big crowds of people and going there. Yeah. Under the illusion, yeah, that they're there for him. There were a thousand people there. Dice shows up thinking it was for him. Look who is walking through the crowd here. Hey, uh, hey. Uh, uh, come. Hey, did you see all the people up there? Uh, they're got... here to see me, the Dice Man, huh? Uh, say you hi. see, they're lined up outside the store to see the Dice Man. I just happen to be here restocking my albums upstairs because they sell out every day. No, 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 Dice. I went upstairs no, no. to the comedy section. There's no CDs left. There's not even a card that says the Dice Man no more because people steal that because they want it because I'm so famous. No, 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 Dice. They're here to see John Mellencamp, not you. Oh, he's here too. Yeah, are you guys here to see Dice? Anyone Everyone's here? here to see the Dice Man, right? No, no, they're, all huh? saying, no they're all saying that. No. Everyone's here to hear me say, Hickory Dickory Dug, this jigger buggy, <laughs> right? Huh? No. You they're... hear me? Absolutely, right? No, they're, they're here to see Mellencamp perform live. Well, you mean those chicks ain't here for me? No, you're not even allowed in the building. I don't even know how you got in here. I'm very busy. I've got to go back upstairs and restock my records. Oh, I see. Okay. Leave me alone, huh? Do you have any new material before you leave, uh, Dice? All new stuff. I do new rhymes. Oh, yeah? Let's, yeah. Let's hear one of your new rhymes. 
Give Bill Clinton and Monica. Uh, <laughs> it's funny stuff, huh? Yeah, that's, that's hysterical. That's top shelf you're, stuff. You're wetting your pants over there. Oh, I'm wetting my pants. All right. Oh. Hey, what do you think of the mayor of the city? Your mayor, Giuliani? Yeah, you must have some uh, cutting-edge humor on the mayor. Hey, you see the mayor's hair? Yeah. It looks like an octopus head, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, that's... that's funny stuff, Opie. Yeah, they're all laughing out there at you, Dice. This chick came up to me outside. She was like, oh, Dice, I love you. Would you take me home? I said, why don't you get a baggie? <laughs> this is funny. You're laughing your balls off, I'm aren't I'm you? I'm laughing at you. It's the same stuff you did 15 years oh. ago. Oh! 15 years ago. You've been I better read the I'm going to restock my shelves. All right, People are screaming for my new record. All right, there. before you get out of here, why don't you plug your, your next gig? And... I'm going to be at Laugh Your Balls Off in Poughkeepsie, yeah. and I'm going to be at Ha Ha's uh, in my grandmother's basement. All right, can you give the mic back to Anthony, oh. now, please? Thank you. Uh, uh, and why are you letting him take your mic like that? I don't know. Uh, that's it's quite amazing. I can never actually talk to him either. No, why that's, is that? that's kind of strange. I don't understand. And you have a cold, and Dice has a cold today. How does that work? That's a little weird. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There you go, a little visit from Dice at Tower Records last yeah. night. Hi, N.E.W. Yeah, hi, I was wondering if anybody saw the Chuck Knobloch play last night uh, in the Yankee game. Because, <laughs> uh, I don't know, I've been hearing about it, but I can't find a replay anywhere. <laughs> a touch of sarcasm, I think. Just a little bit. I'm, I, I tell you what, I'm a huge Yankee fan, but I'm a little tired of hearing it. Opie and Anthony love sarcasm, remember that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we love you guys, you're great. We live for sarcasm. <laughs> And, and by the way, the fan is in hour 21 of discussing the play. Yeah, I'd like to talk about that play. As a matter of fact, I think I got a complete new spin on the whole thing. <laughs> um, Chuck, uh, now what? I think he should have probably picked the ball up when it was laying there and he was pointing. Maybe the better uh, thing would have been to throw the ball. <laughs> then they would have lost 3 1 instead of 4 1. I don't think anybody has hit on this yet, so I think I'm the first, actually. You uh, got a good point. You should call a radio station with that. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night. All right, man. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Uh Hello, is this is this WFAN? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, I'm a long time listener, first time caller. Cool, what's uh, up? I want to comment on the uh, Yankee uh, play. Yeah. Because I, I haven't really heard you talk about it all day. <laughs> um, you know that guy Chuck Nabla? <laughs> yeah, we all know him today. He's on yeah. the front page of every paper. Um, did anyone notice, uh, or was it just me, that he kind of blew a play? <laughs> I, now, I don't know if anyone picked up on this, but he should have probably thrown that ball, huh? Yeah, I, uh, we're we're in agreement there, sir. Yeah, well, thank you. Okay. Uh, is this the fan? Uh, yes, what's up? i got a whole new take on it. Okay. Um, I'd like to use uh, uh, Chuck Nomlock's name in a sentence. Okay, let's hear that. Um, before I go to spank one in the bathroom, I turn the knob lock so my mother can't come in and catch me. <laughs> At least that's something no one said yet. Uh, okay. Well, thanks for calling the fan this afternoon. Thank you. I'm Baba Booey, F. Jackie Skull. <laughs> uh, we rock out with the talking heads on the Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York, the latest from the Goo Goo Dolls off what the hell is wrong with you? Oh, man, my brain just, like, short-circuited. All right. Take two. The Goo Goo Dolls, Dizzy from... No. The Goo Goo Dolls slide off Dizzy up the girl. <laughs> wow. I told you not to boot up the, at the horse before uh, the I, end of the show. I think, like, Chuck Knobloch, I just uh, had a brain fart. <laughs> like, God, what happened? The album's there, and you're pointing something, just yelling at the ump. <laughs> See what happens when you don't do your job correctly? It gets everyone uh, all confused. You Knobloch. <laughs> Sorry. Opie and Anthony, NEW's answer to Knobloch. There you go. Hey, NEW. Uh, hey, hey, who is this? Opie and Anthony. Okay, because, you know, I've been in a, a power outage for the last 24 hours, and I've been dying to know, do you know who won the Yankee game last night? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. See you guys later. All right. <laughs> Okay, good. Smart asses, I love it. Yeah, we do love sarcasm and smart asses. Wow, look at this. Donna Lynn from Jersey Ope gave us a very nice email. She'd given up listening to radio in her car and recently installed a CD player. 
because she was tired of channel surfing and not finding anything worth listening to. But now she plans her driving around our show. Bravo. Thank you. Bravo, Donna. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. We appreciate that. She was listening Tuesday night when you were talking about Scott so driving out of the parking garage the wrong way and had <laughs> tears in my eyes laughing so hard. <laughs> she liked that, huh? Well, it was it was a pretty bizarre scene, actually. Actually, Scott tried to explain it to us the other day. Yeah. In our little office. What happened was I was coming into work Tuesday, and um, I was going down the ramp at the parking garage I usually park in. Mm-hmm. And next thing I know, I mean, it's definitely a one-way. I mean, you go you go down the ramp here. You don't go up this ramp. Absolutely. And uh, I'm, I'm ready to pull in. It, it's so busy out there. There's cars behind me. There's buses trying to pull over. It's just a nightmare, and you just got to get in real fast. And there's Scottso in his car at the top <laughs> of the ramp trying to make a right. I didn't realize it was Scottso. So I'm starting to honk, and I'm getting ready for some good road rage where I was going to just let the four-letter words go flying. Yeah. And just as the first, like, you mother, I realized it was Scott. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, man. So then I quickly backed up into traffic to let him out. And he just like, do, 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 do. And drove Run, out the, hog. Right, he just drove out of the parking garage the wrong way. Oh, my Georgie. <laughs> oh, road hog out of the way. <laughs> So he came to our office the other day to explain why he he goes yeah. that way. And I still don't understand why he does that. Well, he said, um, well, yeah, yeah, I came in this way. I got to get out this way. Right. But there's a different way to get out. Yeah. A, a two lane, uh, one way down and one way up. Right. And this is not it. No. This is definitely only in. Yes. It's not an out tunnel. No. But he, I, yeah, for some reason, thought yeah, this okay. is this isn't a, a bisexual parking garage. No, it's one way. There's only in. one way in, <laughs> <laughs> and there's only one way out. I think it was back when I first started here at NEW. It was a dirt path. Once I got out of the garage, <laughs> covered wagons. So he insists because he's been you know parking at that garage for 40 years that it, it, he'll just leave it any way he wants. He don't care. He don't care. Yeah, that's it. I'm just worried he's gonna get in a head-on collision because it's a nasty curve as you get out of there too. Yeah. You know, and Dangerous. you know how, what we do? We just tool down. I know. We try to see how fast we could go down it and cut the turn before we hit the wall. Yeah, that's a fun, fun little game. It is a fun game. <laughs> it preoccupies our time as we... uh Out of my way, whippersnapper. Oh, my judging. <laughs> Magoo, you've done it again. Oh, eh, oh, eh, oh. <laughs> Who put that car there? <laughs> it's one way, by Georgie. Out of the way. One side. <laughs> you whippersnapper. Oh, oh, eh. Eh, Magoo, oh, oh, Magoo, it's a one-way road, Magoo. Oh, out of the way. <laughs> oh, uh, eh, all right, uh, on the way, we got the, oh, we got you too. Man, and a lot of people want to hear Red Brown's voicemail again. Yeah, I've been getting some emails on that. All right, we'll end the show with that in just a bit. Here's Phil Collins on the Rock of New York. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York. You two from the best of 1980 through 1990. That's the sweetest thing. That CD comes out. November 3rd, it's Opie and Anthony. Hello. Just about out the door. Yeah, look at that. Matt Devote's up next, and he'll continue the um, uh, keeping track of uh, how many hours uh, the fan talks about the play. <laughs> We're into hour 22, and he'll he'll keep you updated on that. Look at these people. Huh? Already an early FU for FU Friday, which is tomorrow, yeah. obviously. Here's a big FU for Ted Henry, the umpire for Wednesday, Wednesday night's Yankee game. Besides not calling Travis Fryman. Uh, come on. Running outside the base path. He earned it for making inconsistent calls about balls and strikes all through the game, too. Exactly. Get over it. Let's just go to Cleveland and kick some ass. That's all. Enough already. Move on.